and hello welcome YouTube welcome to this video of lab view uh, so today I want to quickly uh, go through uh, some Laplace transform VIs so uh, Laplace transform VI is actually what you're seeing over here right now um, this is the VI okay and the VI is actually found um, over in under signal processing and you go to transforms you will see this Laplace transform real dot VI okay um, yeah how does this relate to where we left off okay so where we left off uh, I was trying to explain in a rather roundabout manner how um, how uh, what do you call that um, a Laplace transform can conceptually relate to a Fourier transform so the Laplace transform actually doesn't just extract the sine waves it actually extracts the power of the exponentials as well through the through finding roots in the denominator and we also call them poles the roots of the denominator are called poles um, and why are they called poles because uh, for example if you have a Laplace transform of maybe 1 over s minus 3 and okay if you studied Laplace transforms enough you'll know that this system is very unstable because it has poles that uh, will transform to this this becomes e to the 3t and this one becomes e to the 4t okay but why are they called poles all right if you actually look in the s plane or you actually plot a graph of let's say uh, y of s uh, versus s so you just put y of s versus s all right uh, at uh, s equals to 3 you will have some some very positive uh, asymptote here and then s equals to 4 you'll have a very very positive asymptote here so these things look look uh, very tall and thin so it makes sense to call them poles right so it makes sense to call them poles so because I mean they're very tall and thin if you want to put the complex number so this is the real the real s because uh, I'm, I'm giving real values of s if I have uh, uh, the imaginary part of s as well okay you will actually see that uh, this this thing becomes a 3d 3d looking like pole over here all right I, I don't know how to draw a 3d using my mouse but uh, it will look very tall and very pole like so uh, that's that's why we call them poles. Anyway, uh, there are lots of YouTube videos uh, going through this, so I will not go over this too long. Okay, what I want to really go through is the Laplace transform VI. So this is the Laplace transform VI, and this is uh, uh, how you know the end product looks. Okay, over here I will have a Laplace transform of a, an array of numbers. It won't be uh, y you can't give it a time domain input like e to the power of minus 2t times sine 2t you know, it doesn't work like that you don't need it to give it you need to give it an array of numbers and it will output an array of numbers okay and this is a one-dimensional array at least in the simplest case so this is the final product okay this is the final product of what you will be seeing so uh, I just want to quickly guide you through how to set this thing up okay so this is the, de the demo demonstration video okay um, okay so go right click and you go to signal processing go to this part saying transforms and start with your Laplace VI so again go here to signal processing go to transforms go to the Laplace transform real dot VI okay so you'll need an in uh, some inputs and outputs so remember just now I was saying that the input that you needed was a one-dimensional array. So to do that, I will just uh, click create control so that I will be able to have some time domain signal. Okay. So I have a time domain array. So this is the signal that plots the amplitude or what versus time except the thing is this I don't specifically have a time here I just have okay this is sample 1 the amplitude is 0 this is sample 2 the amplitude is 0 or I can change it to 1 sample 3 the amplitude is 0 sample 4 amplitude is 1 so I can just alternate like that this is just me manually inputting some values okay 
and this will give me that sawtooth wave graph I was talking about and of course the output will be another array so I'll just create an indicator here the the array will be called Laplace of X okay so this is the, the Laplace transform of X all right uh, and it's all in some um, numerical values okay if I try to press press play all of these uh, inputs will become zero why is that okay uh, because the default you, you actually need another input the other input is you know what is the last element of the array that you want to consider okay so for example I have uh, uh, I don't know how many uh, elements over here maybe there are 20 elements I'm not going to bother counting them but by default uh, they will uh, the Laplace transform VI will look for um, the number you give it okay uh, to figure out okay where do I do my Laplace transform till okay that default number is actually zero so the Laplace transform VI will look for the zeroth element and it will stop and it's like okay I'm not going to do the Laplace transform anymore if I change this number to say 5 right if I change the number to say 5 let's see what happens okay it will actually look only till the fifth element and then it will start to uh, do the Laplace transform okay so it will it will go to 1 2 or oh, 0 1 2 3 4 5 so that is actually about 5 there so it will do Laplace transform on only the first five uh, first five uh, uh, points of data so if I wanted to do it over all the array this uh, then what we'll need to do is use the array size vi or array size function so go to array go to array size and we'll wire in the time domain array to the array size vi and we'll go into here okay and then I'll press play and now you'll see the Laplace transform uh, will work properly okay so you see that these, these numbers are now automatically fixed for, for whatever array size I give it okay so if you want to see the uh, time domain plot uh, uh, time domain and frequency domain plots I uh, just have time domain plot here okay time domain plot and this will go this will go to the time domain array okay so as you can see we'll have a sawtooth ish wave graph no, not, not that the x-axis is not time. This is the sample number. Because we didn't actually give specify, you know, which sample was taken at which time. Um, though each, the, the later your sample numbers, the longer the time. Or the later the time. That is the general gist and idea. Similarly for the Laplace transform. Okay, you will not have... You will not have uh, absolute uh, frequency or s in your in your horizontal axis what you will have instead is sort of a frequency bin just like you have for your Fourier transform FFTVI okay so now we have a, this kind of graph okay do we want to verify if uh, this graph is kind of valid I mean absolutely we know that this uh, we know that this uh, sawtooth sawtooth wave form actually closely resembles I mean uh, mathematically it closely resembles uh, an assortment of sine waves okay but actually what you're seeing is not a sawtooth waveform this sawtooth graph is actually an interpolation between the values of 1 and 0 remember only in this array I only gave it zeros and ones for the values so all these, all these uh, zigzag lines in between, they are basically just uh, uh, linear interpolation between my data points. So it's not actually a sawtooth, sawtooth uh, uh, graph, but actually it's more, it's a graph more like this. So you have one up, one down, one up, one down, one up, one down, and this is the value of one. Okay. So uh, this is what the graph is like and of course if you interpolate then you'll have your sawtooth waveform but it's not a true sawtooth waveform okay 
All right, so um, just want to check, yes, if we have this up and down pattern, it will closely resemble, you know, your sine and cosine. Because if you uh, take regular samples of your sine and cosine at particular frequency, you will have this kind of pattern. Okay, and we expect the Laplace transform even of the uh, so-called uh, sample pattern to closely resemble at least the, the um, Laplace transform of the... Uh, cosines and sines. So, uh, what's the Laplace transform look like? Okay, for cosine again is s over s squared plus a squared. For the sine is actually a over s squared plus a squared. So, what do these graphs look like? Okay, what do these graphs look like? Um, I mean, we can of course do the quick <coughs> Libre office way. So, let's say um, we have the s divided by s squared plus a squared. All right. So let's uh, have s. Okay. I'll just delete that. I'll have s here, and I'll go from zero one or zero point one, zero point two, and I'll go all the way down. All right. All the way down. So this Libre Office you can do it in Excel as well. So this will be s divided by s squared plus let a squared be five. Okay, and we'll just pull this down and we'll just make a graph. Insert uh, okay, insert chart. Okay, so the insert chart uh, is actually uh, yeah, you go to insert and you click chart and then you can just do a XY scatter plot. Okay, then I'll just finish. Alright, so this is what the S squared plus A squared graph looks like. Alright, and of course, uh, if you want uh, A divided by S squared plus A squared, so one of them is a sine, one of them is a cosine, so let's let's say A is 2.25. Okay, divide by uh, uh, S squared plus 4.5. Okay, 2.25 squared, I think, is 4.5. Okay, 5.0625. Okay, so this one, let's do 5.0625. Okay, so this is S squared plus A squared graph. So what does it look like? And I mean, uh, let me change this to S. And let's insert another chart. Okay, XY scatter plot. Maybe I'll use lines this time. Next, 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 and finish. Okay, so your S squared plus A squared graph is like this, this sort of gently decreasing curve, or A over S squared plus A squared. So what's A over S squared plus A squared? This is a, looks like a sine function of some sort. Maybe it's a slightly shifted or what. But uh, okay, that, that actually is pretty reasonable shape for this, this little graph here. Okay, so though this is a like a frequency bin of some sort, eh? so it's a frequency bin, it's just like your Fourier transform, uh, VI. So I mean, this is just basic, basic. I'm not going to go through any uh, any more in this video, but it's just to show you. Okay, how do you get this uh, Laplace transform VI set up in the most basic sense? Then of course we can add on more complexity after. And we verified that, okay, maybe yeah, this graph actually resembles uh, this uh, slowly uh, decreasing shape. This, uh, okay, let's see. Okay. Oopsie. Yeah. Yeah, okay, there you go. It represents this slowly decreasing shape, which is very characteristic, similar to the Laplace transform. At least in the real, for real values of s, the Laplace transform looks like that. Okay, so that's all I have for you uh, in this video. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys again next time. Bye bye.